Welcome back to another week of Nuggets. Before we begin, I want to thank Pastor Bob for guiding us through last week's Nuggets. Now this week, we'll be looking at wisdom for righteous living. Because as we all know, a righteous person is not free from temptation or problems. And we need wisdom on a daily basis to know how to navigate the sin-filled world. But first, let's look at what's in our heart. Because you can't expect to be wise when you don't feed yourself with wisdom. Jesus said, For a good tree does not bear bad fruit, nor does a bad tree bear good fruit. For every tree is known by its own fruit. For men do not gather figs from thorns, nor do they gather grapes from a bramble bush. A good man, out of the good treasure of his heart, brings forth good. And an evil man, out of the evil treasure of his heart, brings forth evil. For out of the abundance of the heart, his mouth speaks. That's in Luke 6, verses 43 to 45. Now, in Canada, we group laws in two general categories. Public law, which sets the rules between an individual and society and includes things like criminal law. And then we have private law, which establishes the rules between individuals, also known as civil law. These laws affect nearly every aspect of our everyday lives, and they help set a balance between individual rights and our obligations as members of society. For example, Laws tell us which side of the road to drive on, or what speed to go, or how to behave on the road. Laws are also equalizers because the same law applies to everybody, or at least in theory. Have you ever heard someone say, how I love the laws of this country, or I rejoice in driving at the speed limit on the highway, or those who love the criminal law have great peace of mind and heart and do not stumble. Ideally, we all should love being law-abiding citizens because we know it helps ensure a safe and peaceful society. But that's not the reality. In many countries of the world, rather than internalizing the law in their hearts and minds, people are constantly trying to figure out how they can get away with illegal behavior without ever getting caught. Okay, but now let's go back to Psalms. Throughout chapter 119, the psalmist refers to the law of God as his source of joy, peace, and as his moral compass. God's law is a source of comfort for him, and he loves the law of God. He is so thankful for God's law, and following it makes him so happy and blessed. How can this be? Nobody talks about human laws like this. So how can God's laws have such a different impact on a person? God's laws are a protection and safeguard for his followers and give believers so much freedom in a world dominated by evil. Freedom to choose, to do the right thing even when no one is watching. And that is our nugget for today. I'll see you tomorrow.